ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Say trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Easy, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. Y'all think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore, I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out and finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars, is real big. I got to do it big, the only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to, before you count me out, homie, let me remind you, they was blocking the shine, now I think it's my time to, capping them dollar signs like lights, they'll blind you, let me rewind to, back when I was broke and I couldn't acquire two cents, and now I got two wrists, they was sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big, call my phone, I be like, who this, damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new, smell like can too, I'm fresh forever like can food, try and tell me what I can't do, I wanna see the world, my vision on sham mood, I mean I got goals that's real big, foes that's real big, y'all offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big, coming into the ring with blows that's real big, I gotta do it big, that's the only way I can live. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Accept and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out and finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars, is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Easy, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. Y'all think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore, I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's 
past wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out and finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job that's real. Tell you, Miles. Welcome one, welcome all to another week of ECAC action. My name is Keel Miles on with Oshi tonight, and we have an exciting matchup coming up. We got Florida Atlantic University taking on the Bay State College, so we got a couple coastal colleges coming up. Yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting to see, uh, you know, before all of this set up, we were talking about the ping difference that happens. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if that comes into play here, obviously, with the two different coasts coming in, or the coastal teams rather coming in here. Uh, personally, I'm really interested in just being involved in collegiate esports. This is my first time getting in on it. Uh, I'm really excited, really hyped to see what these younger players bring to the table because obviously they are the youth of Smash Brothers for the most part. Yeah, and this youth, I mean, you know that high schoolers, college kids, they've got a lot of time to grind. I mean, I see the <laughs> the team in my esports lab, they're grinding all the time. And these people are no different. I mean, we got some people, uh, specifically the captain of Florida Atlantic, they they're ranked in Southern Florida. That's a tough region, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, man. You know what? The, the entirety of the United States, first off, every state has, I would say, at least five incredibly devastating players. Uh, and the fact that anybody at a college age, let alone high school age, because that happens, managed to hit state PRs is nuts to me. Uh, and, and I mean, I'm I'm in my 30s. I'm just going to tell you guys that much. I'm in my 30s. So the, like you're saying, the amount of time that they have to put into this is baffling. I mean, we over in Philly, we just had a oh, how old is Mercury? We had like a 15 year old take number one. I'll be real. Oh. <laughs> it, it happens. The Philly's player base. They're very young. These players, though, all around the same age. I mean, obviously college level. But um, yeah, what I can say, FAU Red uh, in the recent uh, Southeast qualifiers for a big old land. They didn't qualify for the land, but they did get out of pools in, a, honestly, a very tough competition. I mean, they eventually fell to uh, University of Central Florida, who they had a bit of a rivalry with. Or uh, with yeah. But, um, yeah, they they put on a good show, and I'm excited to see how they've improved. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. Um, going back to the notes that you sent me earlier on, you specifically noted a Joker player as Comeback God. So let's see if that happens, you know, comes into play here. If that's uh, something that's noteworthy, see if you kind of predicted something with your own, your own past mentions. Yeah, no, I do recall arsenic. <laughs> it was a little <laughs> bit funny. We were still working out the kinks in the whole production schedule. And at times we would get booted from the game and we'd come back and arsenic <laughs> was in un unwinnable games like three stocks one last it and we'd come back and be like joker won one stock we'd be like what and then we finally got to see them towards the end and listen i don't know what how arsenic was playing i guess they were just like put the controller down for a little bit but they popped off they popped off really hard once they got to that last stock and obviously joker known for that but they had to fight through like, like they didn't get more than one arsene they were just popping off jeez <laughs> Uh, so once upon a time, I played uh, Halo 2 competitively, and this was a long time ago. And one of the things that I always found when I was playing online tournaments was you have to get adjusted to the ping. And every single game, the ping changes, right? So that really could just be what it comes down to with Arsenic is, you know, the game starts off, he's kind of feeling himself out, just the ping he needs to catch up to. Okay, this is what my input delay is, and this is how all of my everything comes out. Uh, or he's just one of those people that resets after every single game and has to re-download their enemy. Mm hmm Yeah, and, well, being clutch, being able to reset like that and read your enemy, that's really clutch in this format. Are you familiar with the format? You said this is your first... <laughs> Honestly, I'm not. Uh, well, is this, let this, me... is this standard teams, so to speak, in terms of you have total stocks, three per, mm -hmm. per player? Okay. Yep. Yeah, it I'm is relatively a crew familiar. battle. It is okay. a crew battle, but there is a little bit of a twist. It's a best of three crew battles. So there uh -huh. are three players, so nine stocks each. You take all nine stocks from one team, then you have to do it again. And the first team to win two crew battles, they're the one who's okay. taking it home. Okay, I like that. That's really cool. That gives yeah. a lot of counterplay potential. Yeah, there's a lot of adaptation. We've seen quite a few reverse sweeps, but sometimes people just come in swinging. And honestly, let me tell you, one of the best strategies, especially in a league like this where you're playing teams all over the country, there's no way you know everyone's roster. Mm -hmm. What you've got to do 
is try and prevent them from getting information right off the bat. If you're able to win without revealing who your anchor is or something like that, yeah. whew, gives you such an advantage going into the second crew battle. I'd also say we we when we were talking about the characters, uh, there's a Robin player tucked in there, right? And opening with these kind of I don't want to call them ex- obscure, but I mean in in Ultimate, with how many characters there are, I mean, how many Robins do you even see these days, right? So it is kind of an an obscure character to end up playing against. Opening with that kind of forces if you manage to win that, it forces the other team to put a player in or a character in who's comfortable or advantageous in that matchup. And what it really does is when you open with that character, I mean, obviously a Robin is going to be comfortable against every other top character in the game. You have to be at this point, especially at the level that they play at. So it doesn't really matter who your opponent is. Is your opponent comfortable against Robin though? That's kind of the the big ticket question that they're going to have to answer if that comes down to it. Yeah, and if they're not comfortable, then you've got to figure out fast. Or even better, ask around your team. Again, Yeah, you've got to have, in a big team environment like this, you, like you've got FAU Red and Blue and Bay State College has a whole smackaroo of a roster. I mean, I think they had like seven players or something. Someone has to have Robin experience, so they're able to sit down between these crew battles, because again, it's a best of three crew battle, mm-hmm. so you have time to adapt, time to get ready, and you either send in that person next time, or you just real quick, they're like, okay, um, what am I doing wrong edge guarding Robin? Okay, so what you did, you're, you're swinging too early. Like that sort of thing. Yeah. You've got you've to be ready with the quick practice. <laughs> and that's where the coaches come in key. I noticed both of these teams list them. They've got them on lock in their back pocket. And then on top of that, your players as well. Maybe somebody does have experience with Robin and it's not good experience, right? Maybe their character just doesn't do well. That doesn't mean you don't know how to beat the character, let alone the player. You might pick up on habits. You talk to one another, like you said, you learn, you adjust, you capitalize, you conquer. Yeah, it's, well, you've got to understand the fact that with all these characters in the game, sometimes it is not even the obscure mid-tier characters that terrorize normal locals that have the advantage like in a strictly online format you know who i'm most scared of there is a peach player on fau (laughs) if you are playing it okay first of all i told you about their rng uh in the off stream ludicrous but if you have the confidence to play peach online you're cracked in some way i will say that I mean, uh, that that also kind of boils down. We were talking about Shoto's and the input issues that they come in with. I mean, you've seen Peach players live, right? Their hands just they're like little spiders on their controllers. It's insane. So trying to get all of that clean, consistent inputs online with the delay, with regular input delay, you're right. They have to be insane. Yeah, and obviously... I think one of the main strengths of characters like Peach, (laughs) and again, real quick, I just want to apologize to everyone. We are getting into the game as soon as possible. We're just filling a little bit of time. We will have the game for you soon enough. But anyways, back to Princess Peach, because (laughs) I think one of the main things that has made her so effective online, okay, so effective, given her the potential to be effective when other top tiers fall off, is the fact that she is actually able to slow the pace of the game down a lot more than a lot of other players. I mean, a lot of players towards the beginning of Ultimate's lifespan thought turnips were the best projectile. And while I think that might have changed over the course of the events, it's still very good at stuffing out approaches. <laughs> it's, it's the consistent knockback of it, right? It doesn't have the most massive knockback growth in the game. Uh, and then, like you were talking about, there's the RNG in terms of being able to pull a bomb on, in terms of getting a stitch face, and ter- even Mr. Saturn could be a game-changing pull. But outside of just that RNG, the consistency that comes with it, uh, it's not too long of a move to pull. Like when pulling a turnip doesn't take too long either. You know, it's I have to agree, it's got to be one of the strongest projectiles in the game, hands down. In one, uh, and it belongs to one of the most technically intense characters to master anyways yeah and when you're that technically intense uh, you're not always going to hit the huge zero to deaths online and that's something you've got to accept peach still has some bread and butters that do like 60 percent like even if you're not getting the full zero to death you're Mm -hmm. still finding damage big damage and then you're one neutral win away from an edge guard and peach with her float mechanic terrifying for most characters to recover against 
Yeah, it really forces people to mix up where they're going to go. And the real issue there, I mean, obviously it's beneficial recovering against Peach that her dare doesn't spike, but it's got such a huge hitbox to it that you kind of go, okay, well, she's going to float cancel me. Uh, I'll try and recover high. Good luck against the fair. You're going to get slapped. Okay, you're going to go even higher. Her up air is just as deadly. Uh, she has an incredible edge guard kit. So the key does come down to, like you mentioned, getting those bread and butters just being able to clean out stocks when it comes to peach when it comes to peach counterplay you got to be quick and you got to space hard and you cannot and it's so difficult in this la in the like with the uh, the ping delay you cannot drop shield early when she lands on you yeah well that's certainly true but it is not actually going to be raishni opening up like i had mistakenly read it is actually going to be arsenic who you had ah. chatted out earlier that clutch <laughs> god um Oh boy. I, Let's I'm, see. Like I said, I didn't get to see all of their games, so maybe that was just an unfortunate pattern. We're just piecing together everything, but... Well, I mean, being a clutch god is important in crew battles, but sometimes it's mm -hmm. better to just stomp them out, right? So maybe if you're able to take that, like, that energy that you have when you get to your last stock and you're able to just disperse it over your first few, that's going to give your team such a greater advantage. You can use up that clutch when you're down to one stock against the next person. <laughs> exactly. I mean, being able to stomp someone out, even if you had, like, if you get in with two stocks left, that's great. The biggest thing, if you are one of these big comeback people, is being able to carry over that energy that you mentioned, rather than even just spreading it out across the first two stocks, carrying it from that first opponent over to the next opponent, so that you still have that huge burst of energy and fight within you. That way, you kind of guarantee you're at least taking one stock off the next opponent, giving your team that leg up. Yeah, you certainly are as... Ooh, it looks like... Oh! Oh, I didn't realize this. Toxics. We, they've got Sonics on their team? Yes. So I tried to slip that in just before we started. Their Ooh. most recent video that they released about their Smash team noted that they had just signed Sonics. That's pretty yeah. good. That's, that's going to be tough in a crew That's got to be format. scary, right? Because that can really shut you down. I mean, that's when you need that clutch. If your mm -hmm. clutch is able to at least get one stock off the board, then you maybe got something going. But that's tough. I have seen FAU. FAU Red went up against some high caliber players like that before. Uh, they went up against uh, like Two, uh, one, Smash, one, two, one, two, one, two, Top 30 players. However, it's a whole different piece. Instead, it is going to be Tortex starting out on the Ike. Against this Joker, and it's going to be a little poke war around this platform for now. Yeah, this is going to be some really neat gameplay. Uh, being able to get in between these two characters, I feel like Ike is super underrespected in the in Smash right now, especially online. Having those massive hurt boxes, I'm really going to be able to challenge Joker in the air. Uh, the key is def key for Arsenic is definitely going to be taking advantage of the ground speed difference between the two of them, and then of course the extremely punishable recovery. Yeah. And you've got a counter, counter too, so if you're ever able to force them to go low, it's going over. But, yeah. well, the up has got more than one use. Yeah, Toxic so far is doing an incredible job of just air dominance. Really seems to be the big thing. A dash attack to end the first one, okay. And that just gets a mighty cleave right there. And that up, with up B is going to be punished. But I'm in dash attack and no tech chase. That means you're not going to get a ton of damage back to the neutral hunt. You know what moves yeah. coming out in that neutral? <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the, I, I can't even find the right word for it in terms of this character right now. Ike just swings the sword in all directions at all times. And I mean, Arsenic, we're, we talked about the comeback god potential here. I, I mean, at this point, we really need to see it. He's a stock and 50% racked already. Uh, I mean, Toxix is kind of running away with it right now. 71% with Rage on Ike, you're basically kill percent. Ooh, and I love that lower cover right there. You've got the super armor and they're not in position to counter. They're off stage. But you're not going to land that instead. He's running back here. Almost sets that up. I love that. Side being wow. right to center stage. It's a big call out that you know uh, Snick is going to be aggressive. Well, and without... Uh, oh, jeez. I thought that was going to kill all the way across. Okay. Um, I was just going to say, you know, at the percentage that Toxics was at at that point, on the heavier boy that Ike is, you knew he wasn't going to die from center stage. And so that made the side be super safe. 
Yeah, but at this point, is it going to be safe enough to speed their look into that rubble jar? No, no. I thought they were going to throw it out preemptively. The Arc Snake is starting to catch on that pretty much Toxic always good for ledge. Oh, that forward air cleaving right through them is going to be the stop. So this right here is where we really need to see Arsenic turn out like you call. There's a fair to take the first one. He's a full stock down. Uh, this is just painful at this point to be in his position. There's so much stress, so much adrenaline going on. Can he control it is the question. Ooh, early Arsen though off of that whiff combo. Now you've got some damage going. Oh, and you force him to go low, but not quite the right spacing. But you still get the back air. I'd be probably just going to stay, but they were ready to punish, but not quite pull the trigger. Yeah, Arsenic got just about close enough. Massive up air strength coming back for Ike, though. Uh, again, we really need to see the Arsen getting used. It's gone already. Uh, looking for more Rebels Guard. Hopefully, I mean, there's a lot of big hitboxes. Gives them a lot of time to use it. But uh, just not seeing it. Ooh, once again, the dash attack coming in clutch. It's done. It's snapping at the ledge with the full tilt. It's going to be the finisher right now. No clutch this time. Arsenic going down, and that's going to be Bay State College. Up two stops are ready in the third battle. That was an absolutely massive opener for Toxics. You could not ask for more from your first player. I mean, what else could you get? You get information, you get Arsenic. Okay, they're not quite up to par. Then... You find out, okay, now you get more info. Ike's not going to go down easy. You might even get them down to last stock. The thing I think that really, really hurt Arsenic, besides just the up Bs, not quite spacing around that, was the fact that Ike has just a little bit stronger confirms online. I mean, mm -hmm. Joko's got plenty of confirms offline, but sometimes you're not really fishing for those. Online, Ike, you hit a nair, it might as well be death. Yeah, we saw one attempted setup of the drag down uh, up air onto platform into the up smash, timed it just a little off, spaced it just a little off, unfortunately ended up being a little too far to the left. And that, you know, little little things like that come down to, like you were saying, the online versus offline world. And ultimately that can change an entire game. That second stock that Joker lost was almost entirely due to rage. That was on Ike. So it's just an unfortunate situation, but something you have to adapt to. And I feel like that adaptation is going to play a big role. There were a lot of tiny, minuscule mistakes we saw. Like, that counter at ledge, if they were literally like five pixels to the right, that would have been death, you would have been on a last stock situation, and you would have still had our send. Miracles yeah. could have happened, but that one bit of misfacing, if they give you an opening, you can't let it go. And that is what uh, uh, Bay State College has demonstrated. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was full advantage start to finish for Ike in the entire matchup. From the looks of things, we have Omnilax coming out next to fight Toxics. So what do you think is going to come out of this? Now, this is going to be a complete control over the ground movement versus, like you said, uh, Toxics had really good air movement, was fishing for those confirms, and was not afraid to pull out the up B. Uh, we've mentioned before, Omnilax is on the Shotos, most likely the Kazuya, but they might switch it up. Either way, kill confirms, on kill confirms, on kill confirms, and it's mostly around the ground movement. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be really interesting. And I mean, Kazuya is not even a slouch in the air, does not have the same disjoints, but has incredible anti-air potential, especially with the electrics. Um, really going to be interesting to see how he plays around the ground game that comes with, or the sorry, the aerial game that comes with Ike. Uh, and more importantly, are we going to see a change up from Toxics in terms of his gameplay? Obviously, the approaching fair, Ike's bread and butter, it's exactly what you want all the time. But what Toxics tended to be doing was he would start off with the bread and butter aerials, racks and percents, and then start playing a very heavy ground game against the Kazuya, let alone any Shoto. That can be very, very dangerous because if they catch you on the ground in the right combo, in the wrong position for you, you're gone. And we'll see if they end up staying gone as we're going on to, I believe, PS2. Uh, it's, it, every, you could play a full tournament on only PS2 and it would not get any better. <laughs> no, it would not. A bit of a creative SD there, but now we're going to be having this neutral start. Immediately just playing around this platform. You have the lead. Uh, you have to approach. <laughs> 
Uh, yes and no. I mean, if you're the one that's behind, same thing. You're kind of in a bad situation. But this is what the projectile mm. comes down to is it kind of forces her hand. Good <laughs> job getting out of that. Yeah, I mean, maybe you didn't want to have to deal with the shield damage and just full hop right over that. I'm like, definitely playing it safe. Their footsies, I mean, it's reminiscent of actual traditional fighters. They are uh, not going to just run in on your match. You're going to make me fall in love too fast if you keep saying things like that. <laughs> Big grab, whiffing any punish off of that could jump out of it. And of course, the up B out of shield. Exactly what you would expect to see from Ike. At this point, now Toxic has found their way into Omnilax's territory. Omnilax, they want to control right underneath this platform and get the out of shield off and get the anti air if you ever dare approach their territory. But well, there's the first thing that's stuffed out. <laughs> yeah, and catching the roll in into a fair as well. I mean, honestly, so far, like, Toxic is playing this incredibly well. Like you said, Omnilax trying to set up under those platforms, but the fair approach, getting them all the way out. Did not enough. This? Oh, Woo! wow! And now you've got the Raid Buster online. That's not going <laughs> to kill at this percent, but it's still going to be a chunk of damage. I mean, Fuck. assuming you don't hit something easier first. It's yeah, all it's going to take is a couple uh, couple electrics at this point, though, or just just the right combo. We kept saying that with, with the Shotos with Kazuya. Not able to counter that at all. Wow. Nano going very low. Nice snapping right to ledge. Going to avoid any I... two frame percent. Omnilax is doing exactly what you had said. He's super patient. He's not over approaching. The footsies, like again, like you mentioned, looking nice and clean. Uh, he's playing super safe under this platform. But I mean, Toxics doesn't have to approach either, right? He's up in percent at this point. The team's up in stocks. Doesn't the rage monster go away after a certain amount of time? The clock definitely ticking. You see Cosby flashing right there. Ooh, ah, uh, that. that yeah. Projectile always scares me. Anything instant like that, it's gotta hurt. Ooh. But getting the down tilt right there, it's gonna confirm into the bear, and that's gonna be the stock. And now you can see Chase. That's the clean, crisp stock takes that we were looking for from Toxics. We saw it last game, we're seeing it now. Just the ground game, it switches you up completely once he gets you up at that percentage. I mean, Omnilax, yeah, go ahead, play safe, play your footsies. It's not working for you. You're getting rushed down by an Ike who just hits hits one aerial, got so much knockback, you can't do anything about it, and he just leaves. Long. If you're able to get the electric wind gun fist into the up air, but, or up B, but even with that, it's still not going to feel like, not quite at right percent. Now, where do you go? Mm -hmm. There's a good anti air. That's exactly what we've been looking for. He's not been able to do that enough. Uh, I, Omnilax, I mean, he's hit that one electric up B, like you said, and that's kind of it. I haven't seen any combos. I'm really wondering if he's just not comfortable against the Ike. Maybe it's just a matchup or a weight class he's unsure of. It's possible. It's also that I, I feel like Toxics is completely disrupting their game plan by being even more patient than Omnilax is. I mean, you saw Omnilax, they're like, you approach, you approach, and Toxics is eventually like, yeah. nah. <laughs> Toxics has an incredible balance between defense and approach. Very, very strong spacing on their aerials very good at making sure that they aren't in the wrong spot at the wrong time. Uh, it's so easy to watch people get comboed by Kazuya eating another one and just losing that stock as well. Toxic looking to no, go no, up. Right at the ledge. No! No! Highway robbery! No! no. Toxic, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Objectively the right call objectively the right call but it's still heartbreaking if you are from fau oh you know what you remember how at the end of the first game i said you couldn't ask for more from your opener <laughs> he didn't lose a stock he just three stocked he just he did i what a tough situation that's rough that's really rough but that is honestly the kind of stuff you have to see. The most dangerous characters are characters, in my opinion, like Rob and Pikachu, who have death percent at every percent. Yep. And obviously, Rob and Pikachu, more standard openings. That, it's a little bit 
cheesy at times. It's so situational though, right? Yeah. It's the perfect spot at the perfect time. You just have to land it. It's not easy. It is cheesy. <laughs> it is not. And I, I feel like you make a good point. It is a perfectly... It, it's a situation you usually do not find yourself in with having that amount of rage on that particular position on the platform. But you know when you do get that? When you just got a kill and someone's frustrated and they're running in mm -hmm. and before they take a second to think, they're like, I still have angel platform invincibility. I'm fine. I'm a zero. I'm fine. Yeah, what's the worst think? that happens? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know what? That also comes down to personal character knowledge, right? Toxic's knowing exactly his character, realizing the game that he's forced his opponent into. At this point, he's conditioned them to approach him because if they try and sit under platform and wait him out, he just chips them down with aerials and then dash attack kill, F tilt to kill. So he went to the edge of stage. He knew. I mean, again, you could just stand under a platform, try and control that, you know, jump around to try and wait out the angel timer. Nope. He went to the edge of the stage and he said, come here a minute. <laughs> hey. I got a little secret for you. Hey, remember that Nair been hitting you with all stage? What if? What if? I got something new. And we got something new coming out right here. I'm not sure who this oh. is. Uh, is this going to be Polar coming in from the blue roster, though? I know, FAU, they switched up who's red, who's blue. Uh, Polar, if I remember correctly, got six stocks of the last team, but that was a different caliber of team that they were playing against. I'm not sure it's going to be that free. As now, yeah. well, an air opener. <laughs> so in terms of straight character matchup, this is obviously heavily favored to Palo, even online. Um, I would say the stage as well, going to be Palo's favored, uh, as it should be considering it was their counter pick. Um, it's going to be interesting to see Toxics adjust to only the one platform in the center because he based a lot of his recovery movement off being able to kind of slide cancel off those side platforms with the side B. Yeah, and well, I, I feel like both of them are going to rely pretty heavily on it. You saw the recovery makes up earlier from Polar, but you're not going to be recovering if Ike is only looking to kill off the top right now. You're going to fully shield that if the F smash isn't quite fast enough. you got to keep that in mind. Yeah, pretty risky on that one. You got pushed away just a little too far. Uh, and you know what? The win box works on some characters. Ike might not be the fastest, but he was certainly fast enough in that situation. Good call out with the counter there. And again, good job going high by Toxics. Now comes the juggle. Are you able to get them? No, I like that. Going all the way off stage. It's sometimes a little dangerous, but then the up out of shield. That's almost going to kill him across the stage. And then oh. that's up too. Oh my gosh. Are we going to get an Toxics is going insane right now, playing out of his mind. He finally, Ooh. finally loses his second stock of the entire crew battle. Polar, I mean, looked good in the immediate opening of this, not able to get any kind of a chain going here, at least took a stock. So. I, I think the biggest thing you need to do is you need to finish the stream. You need to either re-jump or no-jump, and you need to be right. Because you're able to get the workers and damage, you're able to get them all screwed, but then what? <laughs> yeah, we really have not seen anybody capitalize on anything that Toxics does, really because... Uh, <laughs> okay! That is a call-out. They have been going high onto that platform, above their counter, again and again. And again, Oshi. And finally, yeah. they went, wait, hold on. What could I do? <laughs> Let's look at our mystery in Mickey Mouse bag of tools. What do we got here? Oh, I was smash. <laughs> I was about to say that they have not been able to take to close the stocks off because they have been using the wrong tools at the wrong time. And that was flawless on the up smash right there. Looks like we lost the arena. Luckily after, oh wait, no, not after the crew battle's over. We'll be right back into that soon enough. But we have time to talk about Polar's Palutena a little more because, like you said, actually some really good adaptation towards the end there, calling out your own mistakes mid-game. Yeah, and that's what it's all about when it comes to playing a character who's so 
I, let's go with versatile, I think is a really good word for how Toxics was playing. He was adjusting his recoveries, his movesets overall, uh, changing up his approaches in order to properly match not just the stage that he was on, but the character and the player themselves. I mean, we saw Arsenic was playing fairly aggressive, and then he swapped into a very defensive aerial game against the Kazia. Honestly, I think he, you know, Toxics just kind of tripped on his own feet a little bit, uh, not really knowing how to play against the Palu because it was such a different pace. Again, matching the very, I'm coming at you, I'm playing slowly, kind of back and forth that Toxics was trying, and Toxics just wasn't able to keep up this time around, got called out the way that he should have. Yeah, and I, I like that you brought up pace. I, I think about that a lot, the tempo at which players are playing at, and I feel like that was one of the most disarming things about Toxic. When you think of like a high-level Ike player, like the Ike players of old, they made the character look like two times speed. They were yeah. going off. Constant nair trains, like they were hitting like nice four or five hit combos, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's also it's Ike, so each hit is doing like 12%. <laughs> um, but the thing is, Toxics didn't play like that. They were not a very high tempo character or player. And so a lot of people probably saw that and they're like, oh, what's happening? <laughs> uh, speaking of high tempo characters though, getting the Greninja in here is going to be a joy. As a Canadian, we have JW just in Toronto, only a couple hours from where I am in Capital City. Uh, so I have seen a ton of high level Greninja. I am very excited to watch Anarchy go off. Yeah, and this matchup in particular, I mean, Palu is a little hard to punish, to put it bluntly. However, um, you're able to, if you're able to play the hit and run playstyle and actually bitch like you get there, get that nair, but not able to follow it. Good to die away from Jake or Polar right there. Yeah, Polar obviously knowing a little bit about the character that he's playing against here, managing to stay out of combo range. Um, really going to be interesting to see. Obviously, Greninja is significantly faster on all fronts, but. Uh, Easily countered by Palu's disjoints and really the, you know, the invincibility of the shield. Something we haven't discussed about this character yet. Yeah, it hasn't been super applicable, but approaching with that dash attack, that's why they do it. Most characters don't love to approach the dash attack. It's never right there when you dash attack forward air. That's the perfect percent for it. That's not a huge window. And then, you know what? I got to give it to Anarchy right there. A B reverse uh, up just of the Water Shuriken in order to get away while the Angel Invincibility is still wearing off. Very simple tech, but also very clean and very, very usable. When you're playing on a nice flat stage like this, getting caught by the Angel Platform Invincibility, things like that happen. Back throws at a ledge. Shit. Yeah, this point, looking a little bit dicey for them. They're a little avoid into the two frame. How we can be a little tripped up by that at times, but at this point we're down to your last stop. And we've got some more information here, but this constant scooping, missing that tech is going to be punished so hard. Oh, just whiffing the two frame on that F smash, incredibly close. Anarchy just doing such a clean job. Obviously very comfortable against like the, the lightier, floatier nature that comes with Palu. But I mean, if you're playing online in this day and age, you got to be fighting hundreds of Palutinas a day. Yeah, it's, everyone is super familiar with this matchup as soon they're able to get a little bit Woo! of a juggle and a nice call out on the landing right there. That was a cross up too. That was an absolute 50-50 and I adore it. That was incredibly well played by Polar. Ooh. But Anarchy coming in, cleaning house to end the first set. Yeah, first crew battle in the bank and Bay State College came out sweet. Winging. I cannot believe that. I uh, Like I said, I saw some good stuff from the Floridians not too long ago. Like, only like two weeks ago. They made yep. it out of pools. They were, I mean, they weren't going even, but they were doing okay against some of the top, top level players in Florida. But this is a different beast for them. I, I feel like it's definitely a different pace at which the players are playing. It's a lot slower, like, but it's slow in a way that is to their character's benefit. Like, they weren't, uh, take, uh, Arsenic, or no, Anarchy, for example, a lot of A names. <laughs> um, they weren't moving that fast horizontally most of the time. They were just mixing up these empty lands over and over again, and then they rush in. It really trips your brain up. Yeah, making good use of the Tomahawks and the overall air and ground speed that comes with Greninja. Uh, 
very fun to watch. Um, interested to see what kind of changes they come up with here. Um, honestly, I don't really think either team needs to change too much in the overall. Yeah, it's like it's sometimes it, it was a sweep, obviously. Like it was, it was very, very one-sided in the overall, but. Once the Ike got caught out, like that Greninja Palu game was a lot closer. Yeah, I definitely think it was. And I agree that you don't have to change anything up. Arsenic in particular, I think, could put up a much greater fight against Toxics. They were really coming, well, in clutch. We hyped them up as that. And they weren't quite able to clutch it out because of the fact that Toxics played so incredibly safe. Yeah. Always, I, I mean, one thing I gotta get, commend Toxics for sticking to your guns a lot of players they hit the up at a shield like three times in a row and they're like i'm gonna mix it up this time and then they get punished for that now toxic lets it rip literally any time it's viable if your opponent isn't punishing you for it why not you know it, you gotta it kind of begs the question at that point how many can i hit and at what point are you going to do something about it, right? Like, if all I have to do is sit here and shield, you're going to approach me with a dash attack or with a fair, I shield it out, and I up B. I, I just did it. I did it three seconds ago, and you landed, and you ran at me and did the same thing. Why would I not up B again? Exactly. Like, oh, I'm going to stale my recovery move? No, like, it's not a kill move. It's racking percent, and then I just dash, dash attack you. Like, hold on, hold on. Did you just say that wasn't a kill move? Because I think uh, some players it's, would it's think It's not his primary <laughs> kill. We saw him kill with it on the last stock of, of game two. Yeah, yeah, that was... <laughs> but that's a different That's a different story. <laughs> and that, that right there is a one and done. In theory, you hit that once before they're like, okay, okay, I remember now. I've seen the Twitter clips. I get it. Yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna be hitting that. I've watched Yeet Smash. I know what you're going for. But at this point you've got you've got to do more than just avoiding gimmicks than to actually beat them, obviously. Now yeah. what do you think? Should they try to sort of stuff them out more at, or should they try and bait out a lot of these options that be, they've been going for, like the high recoveries and the upbees? You have to start with the hard callouts. Um, like we kept saying, he was so predictable and repetitive. Uh, like Toxics was side being high every time he was covering off from the sides. Uh, he was up being out of shield. You know these things are coming. We saw the Palu counter it with the up smash to take to finally end the reign of that character in this tournament or in this game. Uh, <laughs> crew battle, forgive me. Um, <laughs> So that's what you really need to do. You need to make mid-game adjustments, realizing what your opponent is doing. And if you can't do that, you're just going to get rolled. And then the next player has to pick up where you left off. And if they, if a player like Toxics does what they do and they change it up just enough, just enough against the next opponent, it's a fresh start. You're no longer taking what your teammate told you and building off of that. It's a whole different structure. Yeah, and in that new structure, hopefully you can throw them off their rhythm. Like, if you're forcing matchups that they've never had to play, like, for example, Toxics got all of the feel for everyone, and you can tell everyone, oh, yeah, they like to jump at a disadvantage here, here, and here. And you can try and keep that in mind, but most players have trouble, like, conceptualizing that. Like, Omnilax, for example, yeah. to be honest, kind of got deconstructed by Toxics. But going up against, like, Greninja, maybe it's a different story. Exactly, and that's really where, like we were saying, what you or who you choose to start with isn't just about the player it's just as much about the character right um i mean the ike ran train but if it started off with the ike versus palu maybe they wouldn't maybe we'd see a whole different match this time yeah and i'm hoping for that here because as i've said i've seen fau put on performances before and even though bay state college they're a new one for me they're outside my jurisdiction at times but uh hey I'm always eager to learn. I'm in college for a reason, you know? Like they <laughs> I'm I am pleasantly surprised by this uh this I, I assume Bay State is West Coast talent. Are they not? Yeah. Yeah, they are. If you're asking a Canadian where Bay State is. Hmm. hmm. Okay. I, I see <laughs> I see the struggle. What, you don't have coasts over there? No. <laughs> where is Bay State? 
University. I guess there are bays on the other coast Bo- too. Boston? That's in Boston? Hold on, oh. wait. Yeah, Massachusetts. I have been completely wow. confused. So it's not a coast to coast battle. Wow. Whoops. My bad. Bad <laughs> um, by my own co caster. <laughs> oh well. Oh well. But either way. Oh, here we go. Let's go, Floppy. Eh? Alright, yeah. So like you said, open up the town a good call. However, <laughs> you're calling out how uh, some of these mid tier matchups can trip up some people. There's definitely one that trips up a lot of people. What's happening down there? Okay. <laughs> There's a whole lot of waiting it out and seeing what your opponent's doing in a very strange position. So I'm I'm really excited to see this. We fit one of my favorite characters in the game. Obviously significantly stronger online just due to the input delay. Uh, having all of these different projectiles to mix around with. Struggles on the kill side generally. Look at this 80% already though. Ooh, and I like that going off stage because that is where we think can struggle if you catch her before the header comes out. I think with the lap in there too, even more potential combo. And I like the attempt at extending with the explosive flame. We still probably get that the time. Ooh, you're gonna get called out hard for trying to use that other record. Yeah, before the very first game of the very first set, we talked about the importance of ledge guarding your opponent. And I gotta say, Flappe is doing a phenomenal job of keeping Polar out of range at all times with these projectiles. Maybe we'll get them off stage, and I wouldn't mind seeing more of those two frames either. We saw them a bit against Plastic. Do you think you can't do that before? Back there, they're going to be the finisher right there. It's a fast move, especially if you actually land with it. Yeah, exactly. Incredible, incredible landing move right there. A decent disjoint on it. Good kill power as well. And you know what? Didn't use it at any point throughout the entire stock. Either. Nice little turnarounds there, eh? Yeah, I haven't seen that in a while, especially online. Yeah, that's uh, just a lot of little micro spacing. See, micro spacing online. Got to give it to Flop It. They almost went for the kill. Flop It is bloodthirsty right now. They are not letting up the pressure, even when they're like, okay, this combo's not technically done. Let me throw out this projectile down. Maybe it's still going. In the break, you were talking about how really good Ike players make him look like he's playing at two times speed. That is entirely what I'm seeing at a flop A on this Wii Fit right now. Like, this is, this is, we fit after the Summer Olympics. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And look at this. They're still going. They get the landing there to 17% off with deep breathing, and now they're getting even more damage racking up. At this point, you're in combo percent. Yeah, the really unfortunate thing out of that landing there is Floppy didn't expect to hit it, so he spot dodged afterwards. Super unfortunate and wasn't able to combo, but still, like you said, 17% with deep breathing is vicious. And you know what? I don't think he's not had it online this entire game. In this for it now. That up air is so terrifying on those platforms, especially when deep bridges online. They're spacing around these back airs, though, and they weave underneath it to avoid any, any uh, confrontations with that hitbox. Yeah, and you know what? Constantly threatening the sun salutation, what do you do? Because they can just cancel, go straight into that volleyball if you approach in the air, they can just go into a tilt if you approach on the ground. Uh, Floppe is playing so clean right now. Polar, uh, we saw so much promise in the last set, and I mean, she's still playing quite well, just struggling in this strange character matchup. Yeah, and it, it does feel like just a lot of little mistakes compounding, but hey, it's Rafe who's the one who's exploiting them. Three, Three right there. That's it, you can shield the opening for Bay State College this time. Love, flow, let go was the tag we saw. Uh, and quite frankly, that was the Smash Brothers live, laugh, love. <laughs> of that game that was absolute <laughs> that was a clinic that was how to do everything right as we fit right in one game everything we saw the combos we saw great use of the sun salutation we saw incredible upkeep of the deep breathing the proper spaced aerials good use of tilts the only thing we didn't see was managing to ground your opponent with a, with your gentleman jab which, yep. quite frankly, not using that is generally a good idea. <laughs> yeah, against Palu, who like, you gotta be in range to do that when you're not already landing an air or something. Like, I, I feel like they played that perfectly. And I have seen Wii Fits with higher accuracy on the headers at times. I have seen like more consistent combos. I feel like, like you said, 
most important thing, especially online, is being good with those baits. Being good with sun salutation, be like, come on in, come on in, arms open, come on in. Literally, I hit, give up. <laughs> you smack him right out. You smack him right out every single time, whether it's the forward air, the nair, or straight up just go for the header. Yeah, it looks like we've got Polar rolling in. So let's see how things go for them this time. Um, mm -hmm. I gotta say, rolling into a crew battle, watching an Ike take the first set almost single-handedly, and then they open with a We Fit next. That's got to be one of the weirdest feelings. Yep. But hey, the Wii Fits, they've been on the come up recently. I, like, you said you don't do a lot of collegiate, and you brought up, like, a lot of characters are very obscure. Let me tell you, Robin, Wii Fit, and who's the other one? Um, it's not Ike, but there's one more weird character. Oh, Corrin. Robin, Wii Fit, Corrin. Okay. They dominate the college meta. And Bowser, <laughs> so too, but... I forget Corrin's still in this game. <laughs> you because she was so collegiate. good in Smash 4. <laughs> she was so good and so prominent, and now nobody even considers her to exist. Yeah. Well, I don't think we're going to have to deal with her tonight, so you can let those memories oh, rest for now, because we got some like new memories coming in. It's the Joker. Three, two, one, in. If anyone's going to clutch it out, it has to be our second. I guess it's one face player they might be. Better, however, it's tough. We're immediately able to prevent the deep breathing. Oh, wait, oh, just yeah, a three delay. Stock. Yeah, three stock. Yeah. <laughs> so that so that the biggest that. advantage that we're going to see coming in here is Joker's aerial movement speed and ground movement speed compared to the Palo. Obviously, very strong. And then exactly that. Being able to use that Rebel's Guard on all of these different projectiles to get the Arsene is going to give you kill power so quickly. And you're able to get off that there. Yeah, going way high. The double jump to avoid that. Trading with that header. And go way to off. You just turn out these matches. an amazing trip. Yes. That is exactly what I want to keep seeing from Arsenic. Trade with this character. When you're Joker. And when you have Arsene especially. Trade. Go in the air. Get smacked, but smack back. You win those even with deep breathing because you are much harder to kill and you have much better kill confirms. Yeah, like Joker must be led in the, the, the trench for pockets because he's squirting out so much heavier than he was. Oh, it's the heels and it's the heels in the boot, hands down. You ask yeah. ask any woman how hard like high heels and high heel boots are, it's entirely because there's metal in them, I swear. That was a nice confirm right there. You get the spike. Well, this little pivots again. It's a nice, like, oh, you don't know what's happening. Don't hit me. Yeah, this all together is just incredible spacing. Oh, floppy with the snipe. Yeah, match right there. And they try to go all the way to the that tether is going to get you out of the spot. But still not to be exactly opposite. Why is that tether 18 kilometers long? <laughs> Absolutely insane. <laughs> You know it is. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. I should have said miles. I should have said 18 miles. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I don't know if American. Either way. <laughs> Ooh, that header bouncing right back. But not quite gonna hit. The just trying to block that out. And I, I like how Arthur is maybe one like of the only ones to actually knock back the header, make me scared to throw it out. But we haven't gotten a clean hit with it, and just think they still online. This could be a key reversal. Now you've got a chance to score. Yeah, it's a, a tough situation for everybody right here. Obviously, Floppy's got to be a little concerned at the percentage that they're at. One good drag down up air into the up smash will kill for sure right now. Uh, meanwhile, Arsenic just he doesn't want to lose more stocks, right? You need to keep these in your pocket because your team's already down a player. Yeah, you can do it. Ground game completely dominates. The platforms are your own to save baby to do Arsenic. And you're able to get the win with the down gun, but every person is trade now. The down gun shot the volleyball back into Flappe there. <laughs> I'm just impressed by it. Great pickup way low off the side right there. Getting, I believe it was the back air to end that stock. Um, this this is what Florida needs. That is not. Florida needs. 
Oh, I love architects' tendency to just go in when they have any sort of opening, especially with the invisibility. Some players don't get as much utilization off of their support. But they're not even really clean combos for it yet. The big thing here is that Arsenic is clearly very comfortable going off stage and fighting deep down, uh, way in those corners. Something that we didn't get to see before against the Ike, because as we kept saying, kept recovering high with the side Bs up the Ike. Uh, that being said, they'll fly by. Look at this ledge coverage, just saying, get away. I'm not going to bury it in the back away. Like the Arsene either, that little bit of invincibility can give it in. Ooh, a fair change, maybe a juggle, and then you get traded with. Ledge, this could be brutal. But they're not able to pull for it. Let us loot this one rip for the first time. Trading with it, that is an incredible situation when you're the Wii Fit. Look at the percentage right now. You are a full stock down at one point. Uh, you know what? E even if Lubbe dies here, <laughs> I was going to say they've got to feel good about this performance. Absolutely went insane. That is five stocks taken with a Wii Fit trainer. And what a performance. Least, at the very least, good performance. Better than FAU did last time, though. FAU, yes. a little more leeway, a little more room to play with. They're going to have one stock going against this second character this time. Who are they going to send out, though? I mean, Toxic's messed up Arsenic last time. The one thing you do have to keep in mind with Joker, Joker is going to get a very early Arsene because of the SDs. Mm -hmm. However... Just with, even with that one bit of clutch potential against the caliber we've been seeing from base state, is it going to be enough? <laughs> yeah, it, that's a really good question. Will one Arsene make a difference? Because the big thing is, like, sure, they get a very early Arsene at very low opponent percentage, right? It's not that beneficial. Sure, it helps the bracket percentage, but we saw I get, what, 158, I think, in that game against Arsenic and didn't die. So... I mean, what's what's one early Arsene going to do? He had three stocks worth of Arsenes in that first game. You know, it didn't didn't pan out too well. So, um, honestly, I don't think they're going to put Toxics out. I think they're going to mm -hmm. save him. Just because of how well Toxics played in that first set, I think you just drop him to the anchor at this point. Say, forget about it. Because why not? It's super safe. He's clearly comfortable against basically everybody he's already played against and every character that they could possibly pull out. Yeah, I mean, Polar's out of here. You don't have to worry about that. Besides yeah. that, you're you're home free. <laughs> I mean... It's, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty cut and dry. It's a very good point. <laughs> now, I mean, if you want to just clean up shop, you could send him in. But I'm curious, I'm curious, like, we haven't even seen that much of base states. Ross, we've seen two... We've seen like two players. We've seen three. Like, we've seen three, three players. Three, three, point, three right? players. Yeah. So uh, we've seen two absolute dominations and one just kind of clean up. So it's. Yeah. Uh, I think. I think we'll see more of the roster just, just to let them play even, right? Because at some point you have to do that. Uh, yeah. When you're a full set ahead of in a best of three, you're already stocks on stocks ahead. Let people play. Right. In my mm -hmm. opinion, if you can look at your roster and say this is our weakest player, that weakest player is also the least likely to get to play in any time. So this is the ideal situation. Yep. When you have the backup, you put them in, they get the practice, and hey, FAU is good. They will probably, like, there's a good chance they will maybe beat them, but hey, I think oh, yeah. losing is the best way to get better. I mean, that, Hands that's down. true in anything. <laughs> Hands down. You learn significantly more uh, losing than winning every single time. Uh, and that's coming from an old guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we got new blood yes. coming in here. That's going to be Tony. Hey, Tony. Coming hey. in here. <laughs> Against Don't. Arsenic. This is going to be really interesting. Ness, another one of these kind of power characters online. Uh, a lot of projectiles, a lot of strong disjoints. I wonder if we'll see what I absolutely adore to call the kitty cannon, which is the on-ground up B <laughs> from Ness, just kind of launching themselves into their opponent. 
One thing that I will say will benefit Arsenic is while they did use a lot of Lima, they do not rely on it like a lot of online jokers do. They're very good at using these landing mares, the back air, you know, really touch them out. As the landing mares in the opening again and again and again. Where are those landing that you're back in? I need like 15 or more. Oh no! Inside B into that spike all the way from center stage. They're like running up for the setup. And finally slam him all the way downtown. Five stocks to three right now. I honestly Bay State. think I think it took him longer to SD the stocks than it did for the game. Yeah. You're right. That was and you know, okay, so at the end uh when we watched Toxics get that spike, like the the nair into up B ending that game. We talked about how, yeah, it's cheesy, but it's such a specific scenario, right? That's another one of them right there. At the right percent, landing the side B and then getting out, managing to get over to it to land the dare to get the spike. It's it's uh, picture perfect. You got to get it right. And I think it's the kind of thing where a lot of people are not ready. To, I mean, they're not ready to get two frame by that side B. How often does that happen, you know? And even worse, a lot of people, they always go out. They always go away to get out of the side B, which is not yes. bad to do. It's not a bad habit to have the SDI out on that side B, but it sets you right up for that spike. And when you're not ready yeah. for the follow-up, it's brutal. I'll tell you what, it's not a good habit to have when you're trying to snap to ledge, right? That's mm -hmm. And that's one of those things where have, having a good habit is great unless it's in the wrong situation which that that was you know sd as like you said sdiing out puts you in in range for that spike it's unfortunate uh being in those situations but again incredibly well played by tony to force that situation that's the big thing not just force it but recognize that it was there here comes the shoto mm -hmm. now i do like this can a little more i mean even though kazuya technically has more a lot of ken players are uh, very good at the strategy of two neutral interactions and you're dead. You want to get the percent, you want to get the confirm. That's all you need. Yeah, the only thing that I have any kind of reservation or concern about is the magnet stalls that we've seen becoming super prevalent these days with uh, nest players. Uh, I mean, that was a good parry. What? They just know they were dead. Oh, maybe uh, a little bit of. No, I think something's there. wrong. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It looks like there was some miscommunication somewhere. Um, possibly there's a connection issue. Don't know yet. But uh, they're going to be going for a match reset here. Oh, we're on controller. Mm -hmm. Yep. I just flipped over to the chat. <laughs> Tried to uh, pass the controller to your older brother. Tail as old as time, but it's not going to fly here in the ECAC. Sorry, I'm the last. <laughs> Yeah, it's, this seems to have been a thing, judging by the wording that was used. He plays on a pro controller. Uh, so his pro controller was not connected at the start of the match, which naturally not beneficial. So mm. looking to get all of that fixed up. We want a fair fight here. You know, it's we've, we've seen some cheese. That's not unfair, though. No, it's really not because... They have these very specific follow-ups ready for these very specific scenarios. You gotta give... You, you can't be mad at them being rewarded for preparing for something like that. Exactly. That's It's it's so niche of a situation, but managing to pull it off in bracket always feels good. In a crew battle, always feels good. Knowing that you've got all of your friends behind you, your teammates there. Not able to continue on the chicken wing elbows there. Great. Um? I, I I'm gonna like very confident in their ability to carry. They've been fishing for and even with it. Oh my gosh! They're edge guarding with this even fire has been monumental. And they're just gonna have the right the guy straight to the top of the corner to avoid that up these kill. Yeah. That was an incredible trade off the nair right there. Um that was a super dangerous situation. If you actually just regular get picked up by that elbow right there as a light character like Ness, you're gone to a true Shoryu. That is a very aggressive Down to actually breaks out with the grab, and now you've got another opportunity. Right there, canceling the up being perfect right that there. Honestly, we're getting perfect. 
That is the tried and true of Shoto's. Taking advantage of the auto turnaround in this, in this game as well. Being able to get that quick and easy down tilt. Wait for the shield poke and then just death. Just great execution on all fronts for Omnilax there. Yeah, what? What is that snipe? Right Ooh, that was beautiful. Forcing them to go out away from the stage and then going to the PK fire tonight. I've never seen anyone use PK fire like Tony. You know, you mentioned trigonometry at one point in time. This man is just doing straight up calc in the middle of these games with his PK fires, throwing them through four different dimensions in order to get these snipes. Ooh, and they get the two frame right there too, and another oh, it's PK fire edge guard. And I guarantee you there's another one right here. No, they get caught by that upbeat hitbox. Another interaction. Tony is not letting up the pressure. Tony had phenomenal awareness off of the second PK fire catch, realizing that he couldn't get down there in time to actually punish it, landing back on stage and getting another two frame. Tony is playing out of his mind. Whoop. I don't even blame them for going that low, and they do end up in an unfortunate scenario losing that stock now. Can we call by that up smash? Yeah. The distance that that yo-yo holds at when you're charging this up or down smash is so good for ledge ledge guarding. Being able to just kind of hang it over the edge, super devastating for characters that don't have a nice big disjoint on the recoveries. Ooh. I'm not going to go follow up with that Nair on platform. Both these characters could be more to death each other. They've both proven it so far. Now comes the execution test. Okay. Gonna come out. That PK fire going the wrong way. I can't it's think of that time. as being anything but disrespect. If he hit that, if he put that in intentionally, it was just rude. It was saying, look how long I have to still come and kill you. That was so long. Like, it feels like Tony... I'm not even gonna call it the defense. I... I don't know. I can't comment on it. I will say, I feel like Tony has like plus one second PK fire time. Like, <laughs> like the duration's just a little longer. Yeah, Tony played out of his mind. That last string to end that stock was incredible. It was a PK fire into the first hit of an aerial, into a PK fire, into the first hit of an aerial, into a PK fire, into, I guess, an intentionally whiffed PK fire or just a misinput, and then the back here to end the stock. He built so much percent, carried him across the stage piece by piece, and then just cleaned house with the back air. Uh, Tony has to be has to be feeling great after these matches. The little bits that we saw, the opening game with the the catch on the ledge to the down air, that little string that we saw there. Like you said, all of the edge guarding, the insane PK fires that we saw coming out of him. What amazing gameplay! Yeah, I, I called out uh, the Wii Fit. Uh, the Wii Fit player earlier for not having 100% accuracy. I say call out as if that is a problem because they were still winning neutral because of the fact that they weren't hitting everything. However, it really did feel like they had at least like 90% accuracy on that PK fire. Like yeah. they were all intended to kill. Yeah, every single one of those was so precise. It was placed exactly where it needed to be. I, I can't think offhand, aside from, like, again, this, the very last one that went in the wrong direction. I can't think of one offhand that was in a bad spot. There were some he missed, quote unquote missed, as in his opponent was hanging on ledge and he threw it at ledge and forced a roll in. Um, but I wouldn't even call that a miss. That's, that's forcing their hand. It's, it means you have to roll in, and I know that. Yeah, and forcing them like that. Oh, it's a such a brutal call out right there. Like, it's ledge trapping, kind of, but it's more just controlling what option they're doing. Like, it's not even, like, reaction ledge trapping. It's yeah, it's ledge baiting. Like, that's what it is. Yeah, and when you have the, the PK fire, the way that the, the size of the hitbox, you can't jump, you can't neutral get up, you have no choice but to roll, and... I don't know. I was talking about the, the hitbox sizes of the up smash and the down smash with the yo-yos once you charge them. You know, you just kind of leave the lingering PK fire there, especially as your opponent gets to higher percents. They don't have the same ledge invincibility. It's super beneficial. And then on top of that, what we saw from one side, we saw the Ken with a lot of down tilt ledge coverage. You know, Ness can do that too. 
Ness can spam his down tilt just as fast. He yeah. didn't have to. Ness, honorary Shoto after that. And <laughs> honestly, just just a quick shout out to Bay State. I mean, FAU Red, fantastic job keeping up in the beginning, but mm-hmm. ultimately Bay State College ran away. Whether it was uh, Toxex, the master of the neutral, they had Tony conjurer of fire like <laughs> they had uh who was it uh puppe completely demolishing the neutral and then anarchy there as the finisher the greninja the hit and run that you need to see so many amazing players and that's not even all of their roster yeah. bay state you got to keep your eye on them i think they're a serious contender in this year yeah i can't disagree just from just from what i saw this one time um i love love the the visual concept of the hit and run greninja just kind of that poof and it poof and then we never see him again <laughs> it's, it, yeah beautiful picture you painted for that one yeah it was honestly fantastic but that is actually going to be all we have tonight here on ecac so thank you so much for watching if you like what you saw follow the ecac twitter and the twitch right down that little purple follow button just click it doesn't do much Super harm important. and hey but also, yeah. we got some amazing casters. Oshi, first time here at Oshi Dash on Twitter. Fantastic. Debuting on Collegiate with style right now. So be sure to check him out. And of course, at Kilo Miles IRL, if you want to check me out as well. Some amazing production here. Also, we got, I'm actually not sure what your Twitter is, but either way, either way. Mine? No, no. We got P Mint on the production here. David P Mint. Oh, uh, David. Hey. Shout them out, shouting out some amazing ECAC production every day. But hey, for now, I have been Kilo Miles. This has been Oshi Dash. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great night. I promise I'm trying to Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you They was blocking the shine Now I think it's my time to Cap them dollar signs Like lights, they'll blind you Let me rewind to Back when I was broke And I couldn't acquire two cents And now I got two rents They was sleeping on me, homie Must have got too big Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new Smell like can too I'm fresh forever like can food Try and tell me what I can't do I wanna see the world, my vision on share mood I mean I got goals that's real big Foes that's real big Y'all offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big Coming into the ring with blows that's real big I gotta do it big, that's the only way I can live What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Accept and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, fast for it. It's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out and finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live.
Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Uh, that is comfortable. Y'all think too small, I got big dreams. You just start them way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a saw. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore. Just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out and finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little. My God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine. Now I think it's my time to. Capping them dollar signs like lights, they'll blind you. Let me rewind to. Back when I was broken, I couldn't acquire two cents. And now I got two rents. They was sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big. Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like canned food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world, my vision on Shamu. That mean I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Y'all offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got to do it big. That's the only way I can live. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. 